Hello again. Today I want to share a little experiment that I've been doing in creating the anamorphic look with non-anamorphic lenses. So the anamorphic look, we're all familiar with it because it's in tons of movies. It's that ultra wide angle look where the bokeh in the background, the out of focus parts of the image are kind of stretched out. And anamorphic lens flares tend to stretch across the screen and look streaky. So what I'm using to create my anamorphic look today is the Sony a6500 camera and the Helios 44-2 58mm f2 lens. This lens has become really popular with people taking vintage style pictures because the bokeh in the background kind of swirls around a bit and it also helps to create the anamorphic look because in an anamorphic image a lot of the time there's a sort of curvature to the bokeh and this will give you a similar curvature. And on this lens I have my DIY anamorphic filter. This is just a piece of construction paper that has been cut to put an oval in the center. Nothing more fancy than that. And that just goes here on the front of the lens. So I'm going to show you real quick how to make that filter. And I'm also going to talk about a new plugin that you can use in post to get really realistic anamorphic flares. It's called MFlare 2. I am not an affiliate. I have no association with this company, so I'm not shilling for them. It's just something I found that I think I'm going to use a lot, so I thought I would share it with you because I think you may want to use it too. Okay, now let's start by making the DIY lens filter. Okay, on to post-production. Now I'm going to show you the plugin that I just found, MFlare 2. I'll just show you some of the basic features and why I like it. So I'm about to put the Final Cut Pro Effect MFlare 2 on this video clip, which has no flare. Now there are some DIY ways to get anamorphic flares in camera by like stretching a piece of fishing line over your lens and things like that. But I think it looks a lot better and you get a lot more control if you do it in post. So let's try dimmed floodlight. Now as it is, it looks like pretty much every other static lens flare generator, nothing too special. The real interesting thing though about M-Flare 2 and the reason why I'm talking about it today is because it has a mocha tracker built in. All I have to do is track the motion of the camera and then I can apply it to the motion of the lens flare. So I'm gonna move this tracker icon to here. And now I just click track. It tracks the footage. Now you'll notice that her hair is about to eclipse the tracking. And yeah, that just screwed up my tracking. But not to work, I go to the point where the tracking got screwed up and then I move my tracker and I continue tracking and it will overwrite the screwed up tracking data with fresh tracking data. Now I can also track backwards by clicking reverse. So now I've got my tracking data. I can reposition my light source anywhere in the frame that I want. So let's try putting it here over these lights in the shot. Now, the tracking data stays intact. So if I play it back, you'll see that 
it moves with the shot. What's missing is the light disappearing when it goes behind her head. So I'm gonna show my animation here and I'm gonna to go to track brightness and I'm going to turn that on. So now it's tracking how bright the area within this tracking zone is. If that brightness falls below a certain point, it decreases the brightness of the flare accordingly. Now let's say I just don't like this flare, but I want to keep all my tracking data, I want to keep all my other settings. I can go to presets here, and I can say, I want the LED diode look. And now, my flare has changed. And I can adjust other parameters here, such as the center of the flare. Let's say, I happen to think that looks good. And I can also adjust the overall brightness of the flare. And there you go. Okay, now here's a little short film that I shot with Kobe using the Sony a6500, the Helios 58mm f2, and a little bit of Mflare 2 in post. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I also want to say thank you to the Bay Bridge Hotel in Hong Kong because they gave me permission to shoot my video here today. All right, see you next time.